Okay, we're finishing up on the radio section of the Lloyds, and I want to go over a few things uh, that's been done to it since, and why we can now move on to the 8-track unit. Um, I managed to find a stereo indicator light. Our stereo indicator had uh, failed, and I did verify that the uh, lamp here. The lamp here is open, but after removing it, all it says is uh, H3. It does have something on it. It says H3, which doesn't really... Let me get you some focus here. All it says is H3 on it, and when I look up H3, all it says is uh, car headlights uh, and whatnot. So I needed to know what voltage this was. It's hard to read the voltage off of the, uh, the stereo uh, indicator there, because that's just biasing a transistor, and it's 24 volts open circuit. So uh, I pulled back one of the... Uh, 8-track lights here, uh, I think the record light here, and uh, it's also said H3 on it, so I determined that that's running at about 15 volts. So um, everything in here runs on 15, or well, 12 to 15 volts, I would say. So, what to do next? Well, I found in my stash, there are, uh, and, and there are, uh, there are 12, 12 volt, these are called grain of wheat lamps. And this is an old one I found my stash from Radio Shack. I, I don't even know if they would even have lamps anymore. Uh, they have less and less inventory every time you go in there. But this says 12 volts, 25 milliamps. Uh, but before I found that, I need to know. I needed to know how many milliamps does this do these draw? Because that's in the FM circuit, and I want it to draw the correct amount of current. So I used this one as a donor over here. Uh, or I know what I did. I think I used track four over here because these are illuminated all the time while the uh, unit's powered up. So I lifted uh, pin track four over here and I did a current reading and I got 50 milliamps, 0 0.005 amps it said. So that's 50 milliamps. So we have our LED over here, our, our setup we had just to check functionality and that's running on 12 volts and that's drawing it's funny, just uh, that's drawing 50 milliamps just with a 150 ohm resistor on it. So we kind of nailed that one right on uh, just by uh, on the fly. Uh, so okay, so I did a current reading of uh, the lamp on the 8-track, got 50 milliamps. So now the search was out for a 50 milliamp 12 volt lamp. I found this 12 volt 25 milliamp, and uh, I tried it, and it worked fine. But I also had uh, I like to keep one around for testing. Uh, there are also some on eBay uh, from China, or it, the Chinese, of course, are the most uh, least expensive. I can get 50 of them for not much money at all. But the thing is, none of them, only one site said how many milliamps they drew. Because I guess train hobbyists, uh, other hobby uh, crafts use these lamps. Well, anyway, we need a 12 volt 50 milliamp replacement bulb. Uh, I found in my stash one of these lamps here. So I attached it to the power supply, and at 12 volts it draws about 40, so I decided to go with that. So I, uh, the, the rubber grommet here was all all dried up, so I've, I've added a new rubber grommet there, and one of these 40 milliamp uh, 12 volt lamps. So uh, I'll turn it on now. We have our stereo indicator. I could have stuck an LED in there, but... I, I'll, I'll leave it a lamp. Um, the tuning is still on FM. It's off. Maybe it's coming down. It was off 200, 200 kilohertz before. Am I saying that right? So now it's, um, it's only about 100 off. And it's slowly creeping back. It's taking longer but than the uh, spray without the lubricant. But that, like I say, we had to put the deoxid in there. So the FM is back with stereo. And it, it tunes well, like that's 107. And it reads at 108. I'm not really worried. And it does. That's the last station on dial 107.9, so it's it's a little off, but I'm not going to worry about it. As far as I'm concerned, this is this is done. 96 over here will come in at about just a little tad over 96. I didn't adjust the oscillator, not knowing which screws to adjust and, and whatnot. And let me show you AM real quick. 
AM now when you turn it, there's no static. Okay, so there's no more static on AM. And the last thing I want to show uh, you is uh, another YouTuber suggested, well, why don't you just uh, replace the tuning capacitor with one from a junker around? They're all about the same. Well, that was a good idea. And, and in case I needed to, I want to show you some junkers here. This is the Juliet top model from Hong Kong, 1973. It has a Japanese one, very similar, but not exact. And it's labeled differently, C1, C2, C3, C4. And I've, I've, I know I have to re-educate myself here, which two, which ones are the oscillator, AM, FM, and whatnot. I don't know, but I'm sure they're all the same. I didn't want to go turning and tweaking anything. And I also want to know the jobs of each of these transformers. There's 12 of them in both the Juliet and in the uh, our Lloyds here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... I thought I counted to 11. I thought I counted 12. Well, in any event, uh, over here we had a sound design radio from somewhere in the 70s. And this also has, well, let's concentrate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this one has the same number as the Lloyds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I swore there was 12, but anyway, we'll back back on that later. Uh, it just so happens this sound design radio, this clock radio here from the Junker, uh, this has the exact same tuning capacitor, same manufacturer, same labeling. So if, if I had to, this is the same exact tuning capacitor. But I hate to get into this area here. It's, it's, it's really tight and nuts and it's all tuned. I, I really don't want to mess with it. But it's the exact same tuning capacitor. That was a good idea from a good suggestion from the YouTuber. Take one out of a junk chassis if that spray did not solve our problem. And the only other thing I, I want to know in the future is these are slanted diagonally this way and this way and the ground and ground and the, the writing is this way across. Who, what is what here? I need to find a uh, I need to find the uh, table of what what capacitor here is what so uh, in the future we'll know that. Uh, I may have known it but I've since forgotten so any event let's get back to the radio so that's it for AM now we can move on to the tape we have our FM and FM stereo 96 is just a tad a, a tad off. I'm not worried about it. It may have been that way to begin with. So any event, that's what we'll do. We'll finish up the uh, that's the radio section of the uh, of the Lloyds. And now we'll move on to the tape section over here, which works pretty much, but I know it needs a little more lubrication as it gets hung up on some of the tracks. And I want to hit that motor. See, it gets hung up right there, so, and then it'll release. So we're going to doctor this up a little bit, and we'll move on. And this, like I say, this is also a record deck. And I've reattached the, uh, there's the record, and I've reattached the fast-forward switch, so I had to undo the wire, because one wire was in the way. So we put the fast-forward back on the 8-track. We have our stereo indicator on the radio. The radio is pretty much aligned to where it was. So well, that's it for the Lloyd's FM section, uh, AM FM radio section. Now we're going to move on to the tape. The turntable is done, and we're going to throw this back in the cabinet. Again, it's not going to be ready for this week, but we'll get this thing back together so we can move on to some other projects. Thanks for watching.